Paris to start withdrawing troops from Lebanon in a few hours' time. A Syrian minister says the redeployment would be completed after two to three days. The British government says there'll be no more concessions on its controversial anti-terrorism legislation. The brutal rape case in Pakistan that's caused worldwide outrage. Now it goes back to the courts. And on a wing and a prayer, can Prince Charles help save the albatross from extinction? Hello, welcome to BBC News with me, Deborah McKenzie. Syrian troops in Lebanon are due to start pulling back towards the Syrian border in a few hours' time. The pullback is to take place in two phases, when we'll begin after the Syrian president and his Lebanese counterpart have met in Damascus to discuss details. Lebanese opposition figures in Beirut have said it's essential that a full withdrawal take place before the country's legislative elections, which are due in May. And still to come here on BBC News, an Israeli bank is investigated over allegedly laundering hundreds of millions of dollars. The latest exit poll in parliamentary elections in the former Soviet Republic of Moldova suggests that the governing communists have lost their parliamentary majority. Moldova's communists used to be pro-Russian but now support closer ties to Europe. Our correspondent Helen Fawkes has been monitoring the day's events from the Moldovan capital. The Jordanian Foreign Minister Hani al-Mulki has been visiting Israel, the most senior Jordanian official to go there for four years. During meetings with Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon and senior ministers, Mr. al-Mulki appealed for the intensification of efforts to solve conflicts involving Israel, the Palestinians, Lebanon and Syria. Both countries are reported to have agreed to cooperate on building a canal between the Red Sea and the Dead Sea in an effort to prevent further drying of the Dead Sea. Jewish settlers in the southern Gaza Strip have planted olive trees in a gesture to show their determination to stay on the land. The Israeli government plans to remove all 21 settlements from Gaza and four from the West Bank in the summer. The pull-out plan has been approved by both the Israeli cabinet and parliament, despite opposition from the settlers and their backers. And now the headlines here on BBC News. Syria is preparing to start withdrawing troops from Lebanon in the next few hours after weeks of international pressure. The British government has said it won't make any more major concessions on its controversial new terrorism legislation. Pakistan's government is set to file an appeal in the country's high court over the acquittal of five men accused of gang rape. Well, back now to our top story, the withdrawal of Syrian troops from Lebanon. Aaron Miller has served as an advisor to six U.S. secretaries of state, helping to formulate U.S. policy on the Middle East, and he joins us from our Washington studio. Aaron Miller, Miller do you see what's happening in Lebanon as indicative of moves, moves in the wider Arab world? Some news just in now. The Bolivian President Carlos Mesa has announced that he'll present his resignation on Monday because of a crisis in the country. His government has faced mass protests in recent weeks with street demonstrations and road blockades throughout the country. We'll bring you more on that as we get in. Now, thousands of people in Chile have been paying their last respects to the veteran leader of the Communist Party there, Gladys Marine, who's died of cancer at the age of 63. She campaigned against the military government of General Augusto Pinochet, and in 1998 she filed the first lawsuit against him for human rights abuses. In other news, the Deutsche Börse has withdrawn its offer for the London Stock Exchange. It's reported that the Frankfurt Stock Exchange's chief executive was forced to bow to mounting opposition to the deal from his own investors. In a statement, the Deutsche Börse said the decision was taken because the LSE did not recommend a price for shares that it could accept. Up to 20,000 Moroccans have joined a protest demanding the release of hundreds of prisoners of war held in Algeria. The demonstrators in the capital Rabat called for the return of the men captured by the Algerian-backed Polisario Front during the war for control of Western Sahara in 1975. 
Now, on the latest stop of a flying visit to New Zealand, the heir to the British throne, Prince Charles, has made an impassioned plea to save the albatross from extinction. At a conservation project in Dunedin, the prince called their decline in numbers an appalling tragedy. Our royal correspondent, Peter Hunt, is travelling with him. And that's all from the BBC Newsroom for the moment. Stay with us. Syrian troops in Lebanon are due to start pulling back towards the Syrian border in a few hours' time. The pullback will begin after the Syrian president and his Lebanese counterpart have met in Damascus to discuss details. Lebanese opposition figures have said it's essential that a full withdrawal take place before the country's legislative elections in May. The British government says it won't make any more major concessions on its controversial new anti-terrorism measures. Ministers say a warning from the country's former top policeman about the scale of the terrorist threat to Britain highlights the need to push the legislation through Parliament this week. Three people are due to appear at Bow Street Magistrates Court today, charged with plotting to fund terrorism. The two men and a woman from Coventry were arrested on Tuesday. One of the accused also faces charges of directing a terrorist organisation and belonging to a prescribed organisation, Lashkar i Taiba, or Army of the Righteous. Detectives searching for a missing 34-year-old woman have found a body near the village of Langham in Norfolk. Kim Fuller vanished on Thursday after telling a relative she was going to visit friends in Soham in Cambridgeshire. But formal identification will not take place until later today. The 38-year-old man is being questioned at a police station in Cambridgeshire on suspicion of murder. The train drivers' union, ASLEF, has called for new safety measures to prevent accidents and collisions on the railway network. It says the technology is already being used in the United States. The union says it would be criminally irresponsible not to introduce the new equipment here. According to industry figures, 80 trains collide with obstacles on the line every day. Now, remember, you can keep up to date with all our top stories, our weather and sport through the interactive service BBC I. Press the red button and then follow the on-screen instructions. That's the news. Now on BBC News 24, it's time for Dateline London. <laughs>